Shadow, had done three years in prison. He was big enough and looked don't fuck with me enough that his biggest problem was killing time. So he kept himself in shape and taught himself coin tricks and thought a lot about how much he loved his wife. The best thing, in Shadow's opinion, perhaps the only good thing about being in prison was a feeling of relief. The feeling that he'd plunged as low as he could plunge and he'd hit bottom. He didn't worry that the man was going to get him, because the man had got him. He was no longer scared of what tomorrow might bring, because yesterday had brought it. It didn't matter, Shadow decided, if you had done what you had been convicted of or not. In his experience, everyone he met in prison was aggrieved about something. There was always something the authorities had got wrong, something they said you did when you didn't, or you didn't do quite like they said you did. What was important was that they had gotten you. He had noticed it in the first few days, when everything from the slang to the bad food was new. Despite the misery and the utter skin-crawling horror of incarceration, he was breathing relief. Shadow tried not to talk too much. Somewhere around the middle of year two, he mentioned his theory to Low-Key Lysmith, his cellmate. Loki, who was a grifter from Minnesota, smiled his scarred smile. Yeah, he said, that's true. It's even better when you've been sentenced to death. That's when you remember the jokes about the guys who kicked their boots off as the noose flipped around their necks because their friends always told them they'd die with their boots on. Is that a joke? asked Shadow. Damn right. Gallows humor. Best kind there is. When did they last hang a man in this state? asked Shadow. How the hell should I know? Lysmith kept his orange blonde hair pretty much shaved. You could see the lines of his skull. Tell you what, though, this country started going to hell when they stopped hanging folks. No gallows dirt, no gallows deals. Shadow shrugged. He could see nothing romantic in a death sentence. If you didn't have a death sentence, he decided, then prison was, at best, only a temporary reprieve from life, for two reasons. First, life creeps back into prison. There are always places to go further down. Life goes on. And second, if you just hang in there, some day they're going to have to let you out. In the beginning, it was too far away for Shadow to focus on. Then it became a distant beam of hope, and he learned how to tell himself, this too shall pass, when the prison shit went down, as prison shit always did. One day, the magic door would open, and he'd walk through it. So he marked off the days on his Songbirds of North America calendar, which was the only calendar they sold in the prison commissary. And the sun went down, and he didn't see it. And the sun came up, and he didn't see it. He practiced coin tricks from a book he found in the wasteland of the prison library, and he worked out. And he made lists in his head of what he'd do when he got out of prison. Shadow's lists got shorter and shorter. After two years, he had it down to three things. First, he was going to take a bath. A real long, serious soak in a tub with bubbles. Maybe read the paper, maybe not. Some days he thought one way, some days the other. Second, he was going to towel himself off, put on a robe, maybe slippers. He liked the idea of slippers. If he smoked, he would be smoking a pipe about now, but he didn't smoke. He would pick up his wife in his arms. Puppy, she would squeal in mock horror and real delight. What are you doing? He would carry her into the bedroom and close the door. 